Are you looking for a friend in the financial services industry? Someone you can trust to help you build real wealth without taking all of your hard-earned money? Well, you've come to the right place. The Master of Money show starts right now. Tonight's Master of Money program is sponsored by Harvest Investment Services, an investment advisor where they harvest gains and minimize losses, and by Superstock Investor, providing institutional research to individuals. Tonight's special guest is Mr. Tim Newell, Principal of Harvest Investment Services. This Master of Money program was produced Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Master of Money program. I'm Steve Beeman, your host, and I am personally glad that you've shared this time with us once again so we can give you a booster shot down your path to prosperity. You know, this program, as well as the Society to Advance Financial Education, exists to fill those gaps in the economic and financial world that you don't get anywhere else. We certainly don't teach a lot of these principles anywhere that I know of, so we're glad that you spend your time with us here on The Master of Money. Now tonight, we're going to continue in our saga of financial planning, and we're going to talk with you about comprehensive financial planning. Now, of course, you may ask yourself, why is that such a big deal? But I consciously use the word comprehensive. A lot of people that we talk to, many, many folks, don't have a total plan in place that is comprehensive. So we brought Tim Newell back from Harvest Investment Services to talk with you in the second half about why people do this, why they don't, and what steps can be taken to make sure you don't fall into a trap of not having all of your bases covered. Now, last week, we talked about robo-advisors, you may recall, and we've had some fun with them. These are the automated trading systems brought about by Wall Street looking to cut costs and even improve performance. But I spoke with you about when robo-advisors might be good things. I gave you specific examples of where these automated trading systems can actually help you start doing the right thing. But I also spoke with you about two major limitations of automated systems. Number one, that typically they don't have good risk controls. We talk here at the Master of Money frequently about putting very tight risk controls on your money. The automated systems typically don't do that. They operate off of the efficient market hypothesis, so they want you invested at all times. That may not be appropriate given your circumstance. The second thing we talked about is how impersonal they are and the fact that they can never understand the nuances of your life. And that's important as you put together a financial plan for a generational wealth transfer. If you're looking now for grandchildren or for children or you're young and you're just building your dreams, those dreams belong to you and no computerized algorithm is ever going to understand that. Now, we also met last week once again with our contributor, Jeff Garbaz of Superstock Investor. Jeff brought us updates on several of the stocks he's recommended and talked about profits he's taken in some of those, very handsome profits. We spoke about the types of tools that are available to Masters of the Money members. And so if you have any questions about that segment and those tools, always feel free to write me at questions at safefinancial.org and we'll get answers to you right away. We want to thank Jeff and all of the people who support the program because it does give you value-added resources you're never going to get anywhere else. Now, this week's question came in from a viewer who said, Steve, I'm thinking of moving to a tax-free state. Well, all governments need money, so where do they hit you if they don't hit you in an income tax? Well, I had a fun discussion with this gentleman because a number of states, Texas and others, don't have income taxes but they still require state money, right? Well, they get those money from everything from user fees on license plates to sales taxes and property taxes. It is nice not to have to pay an income tax, but I promise you, you're paying somewhere. So as you look at what your specific circumstance is, it may just be if it's a real high property tax state and you want to own a big house, you're going to pay more in property taxes to offset a low income tax from one of the states with lower income taxes. So as you think about retirement and where you want to live, once again, look at the comprehensive picture. Don't just look at one dimension of income taxes. 
Look at all of the dimensions of income taxes and property taxes, health care availability, transportation, communications, all of those infrastructure needs you'll need to build a better retirement. Well, we want to thank that gentleman for writing in, and we always welcome you to write us at questions at safefinancial.org. Now, this week, we've got a lot to talk about in the geopolitical, economic, and financial markets. It was a busy week last week. Topping the note in the um, economic side is Greece. You and I have talked about Greece a lot in the past, and it's an important little country because as a linchpin for, NA or for the European Union, if Greece falls, the European Union could fall. Well, pay close attention to the master of money next week because it's going to be reported whether Greece actually does default on its loans to the European Central Bank. They're set up to fail as it is right now. Unless they get more money into the Grecian banks, they will not be able to pay their debt service, and that means default on the part of Greece. Well, that is terrible for the European Union. The French, the Germans, and all the other member states are going to have to determine what they do to Greece. But if you see that in the European Union, well, it could have another geopolitical problem in NATO. We've got massive movements by the Russian government into Ukraine, as you've seen. They've moved into Crimea. They could begin to move for a dismantling of NATO. In fact, there's been rumblings throughout France and other NATO members that maybe NATO served a Cold War purpose and no longer serves a strong defensive purpose. This is big news because it puts America in an isolated position vis-a-vis -vis the global geopolitical military power. So we don't want that to happen. But the French have already said they've got more in common with the Russians than they do the Americans. So this Grecian situation could be a catalytical event to cause the European Union problems and maybe even NATO. Keep an eye on it and stay tuned to the master of money. Also, last week, you saw the Prime Minister of Israel talk to the U.S. Congress in joint session. This was highly politicized, and I think we can ignore most of that. But what he said was very real in that the proposed agreement with Iran, it's not done yet, this is in the works, but the proposed agreement puts a 10-year hiatus on Iranian development of nuclear uh, weapons materials. Now, the Israeli stand on that is twofold. First, you can't trust the Iranians, so they're going to build this in that 10-year period anyway. And secondly, 10 years in a time frame of countries is nothing. The Iranians have come out in response to that speech and stated specifically once again that they want to annihilate Israel. Well, the reason this is important economically, as we see these changes in Greece and the European Union possibly coming up, the instability being brought about in the Middle East increasingly over the Iranian nuclear situation could cause the markets to tumble a little bit. Now, right now, we've talked in the past that these markets are being held up by a zero interest rate policy. Well, we're going to talk more about the Fed in just a minute. But this instability that's building around the world could be materially impactive on these markets. It's all the more reason that we talk to you about putting risk controls into your portfolios. Whether you put stop losses in or how you do it with the options market, the futures market, however you do it, make sure you've got risk controls in your portfolio so these things don't come back to hurt you. Now, in the economic news last week, we had a very strong jobs report with about 280,000 jobs created in February. This is the sixth consecutive positive job growth number. We like that. You cannot argue with it. The problem is twofold. First, even though it brings unemployment down, and I think they reported 5.5%, the U6 number, which is another unemployment number that counts discouraged workers, it remains stubbornly high at 11.1%. But more importantly, this, um, this um, jobs report number showed no real wage inflation, and that's key. As wages have grown in the last year, it's been by less than inflation, meaning that the American worker isn't putting upward pressure on prices. Now, that's highly relevant because it tails into the Federal Reserve. The Janet Yellen's Federal Reserve, and we've talked with you often about this, they want to raise rates. They know that they are building another bubble of sorts, keeping interest rates so low. 
Well, last week when this jobs report came out, you saw the markets jump down real quick. And they did that out of a fear that the markets were going to get hit by an interest rate rise. And the reason that happens, by the way, it's not hard to figure out. Right now with zero interest, your incentive to seek return on your money is to go into the markets. Well, as interest rates come up, your incentive to go in the market comes down. And that's why they're concerned that there'll be a big sell-off. Well, this jobs report, and that's where these things all tie together. Without the wage inflation, we're looking again at wage growth of about 2%. Janet Yellen has stated without wage inflation, the Fed does not want to raise interest rates. So it's quite possible where we were looking at late spring, early summer as an interest rate time, quite possible this could push it out a little further. But again, we don't know. And it goes back to what I've been saying and increasingly saying to you, make sure you've got risk controls on your equity and bond portfolios. You don't want to get hurt if all of a sudden these things change in a chaotic way. And you know what? They frequently do. Major indexes last week, as we said, did get hit because of the fears of the Fed raising the rates. The NASDAQ had risen above 5,000. Again, there was a lot of talk whether that was a bubble, but it came down significantly a few percentage points after the announcement of that. But I want to go back. If you've got an equity portfolio, look how rapidly the markets responded to the thought that interest rates might go up. St instability in Europe, instability in the Middle East, markets that are hanging by a thread on the zero interest rate policy, you want to make sure you're employing full risk controls. We talk about that with you all the time. Now again, with volatility, the VIX bounced up a little bit. You will want to watch the VIX because again, it's not always reactive. Sometimes it's very prescriptive of what's going to happen in the markets. So the VIX is an interesting little play right now, as is what's called the TBT, which is an ETF that tracks treasuries. The idea is if interest rates go up and bond prices go down, the TBT ETF will go up. So if you think interest rates are going up, if you're in that camp and you want to make a play, the TBT will allow you to do that. So that's just a quick idea for you. By the way, I wanted to mention um, last week important news. If you follow late night television, you know of a product called a Snuggie. It's a one piece full body suit that you can wear that lets you snuggle with yourself as you watch TV, read your favorite book, whatever it is. Well, Snuggies had an $8 million problem last week. They were advertising to you that you buy one, get one free. Sounds pretty good until you realize that you bought one and got the Snuggie free, but you were charged twice for shipping. And the Federal Trade Commission came in and hit them with a seven or eight million dollar fine. So if you bought a Snuggie, you might want to go back and try to get reimbursed for your double shipping costs. Now, tonight's program, as I said, when we come back from the break, we're going to have Tim Newell join us, and we're going to talk with you about comprehensive financial planning. This is hugely important because as you develop a plan to move forward in a very tumultuous market and time with change accelerating more and more rapidly each day, you want to make sure you have all your bases covered. Well, tonight we're going to continue on this and hopefully cross some T's and dot some I's and give you the information you need to double check your plans. Obviously, when you have questions, you write us at questions at safefinancial.org and we're going to get those answers to you as soon as we can. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after our short break and we'll continue on this edition of the Master of Money. It's only a car. A car is a car is a car with nuts and bolts and leather and cogs and steel and wood and glass. Intelligent wipers and head-up displays. Alloy and oil. Sensors and sound. Digital mapping and satellite tracking. Twists and turns and smiles and miles. Infrared eyes and self-trying brakes and one little key. A car. It's only a car.
Welcome back everyone to the Master of Money. I want to thank you as always for joining us. You know, the purpose of this program is to fill in those financial and economic gaps that you have so that you can build a better path to prosperity. We know there are a lot of charlatans out there that can try to you know, build programs that take your money from you. Well, the Master of Money is built to help you build the wealth you need. We're joined once again tonight by Tim Newell, the principal of Harvest Investment Services, and we're so thankful to have Tim's participation. He has experience with exactly the type of issues you need to learn about. He's dealt with both retail individuals his life, but also businesses, 401ks, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, Tim, welcome to the program, and thank you again. Steve, thanks for having me on the program again tonight. Now, we're talking in this series about financial planning, and this is something that it seems so simple. It's the most common sense thing in the world. When we talk to these folks and say, look, we put together a plan, we execute on it. But you know as well as I do that, first of all, they don't frequently do that. And when they do do it, they oftentimes don't do it in a comprehensive fashion. So they're leaving T's uncrossed and I's not dotted. In your experience, again, we've talked before about it, but what percent of the people who you see don't have a plan at all? Steve, in my 30 plus years experience in the business as a certified financial planner, I can probably count literally on one hand the number of people that have come into our office sat down at our table and have actually had any real comprehensive planning done at all in fact i would um this is a sad analogy but it's true uh, people probably spend more time planning a party or a vacation than they do the rest of their entire financial future steve to what you attribute that though is it financial, a, a lack of awareness? Is it laziness? Is it not discipline? What do you think drives that? Well, there's a number of things that drive that, I believe, Steve, but we do live in a culture that we want everything now. We want it microwaved. We want it fast. Uh, we, want we, it live in, we want it our way, fast food culture. And the concept of long-term planning for many people escapes them, whether you know that we just weren't raised that way we didn't experience it in our household so uh, it's it's not something that's really taught well in schools you know you can go through all the way through a master's level of education and beyond and still never have any courses in school that really get into helping you to put together a, a financial plan uh, which is sad when you think about it. It's, you know, we've talked here, there are, what, 10,000 people a month retiring right now? And of that 10,000 people, I think the number we've talked with the Masters of Money about is maybe 90% of those people aren't prepared for retirement. Sure. You know, as I said, Steve, uh, you know, I started in this business 30 years ago. And when I started in the business, the lion's share of individuals that we would sit down with that were preparing for retirement we were working through retirement decisions largely based upon their pension plan mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, their Social Security. And yes, there were still problems with Social Security and inflation, but by and large, many people or a large percentage of the population had a retirement plan put in place for them um, through their pension plan or through the union. Um, and today, it, with the advent of 401ks, or what we call defined contribution plans, basically it's up to the individual or the participant to mm -hmm. save for their own retirement. Um, but it's not just retirement. There's many goals that go way beyond retirement, such as college planning and things like that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that because it segues beautifully into my next question, which is when people do come in and they have a plan, and so they've taken some steps, are there areas of their plans that you can say, wow, you missed this? Because again, we talk about comprehensive planning versus just, I need a dollar for retirement, so I'll put in three times that into my plan. Well, Steve, um, once again, I can't, I can't think of hardly anybody that's actually come in and they've actually had a plan in place that I could pick holes in. I would love to pick holes in somebody's <laughs> plan. All right. The problem with most people is that they haven't done any planning at all. And, 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 you know, reality, part of my role up front is helping to educate people on the reasons to put together a plan and that it's not just a once and done event, 
but that it's something that is going to follow them for the rest of their lives. It's going to be a, uh, a financial blueprint that we put in place. So one of the analogies I like to use, uh, you and I just spent some time over the last few days traveling across the country, and uh, today we use GPSs. We have them on our phones. We have them on our computers. We have them on our dashboard. Yeah, maybe a lazy traveler. It, 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 you know, we don't use an atlas or a map anymore, you know. Um, but the, the GPS can at least take us from the point that we're at today and help us determine what it's going to take based upon X miles an hour to get us to where we want to go. And in fact, there's apps we can have on our phone and our iPad that will reroute us because they'll tell us that there's, there's an accident here or there's construction there on that road. and It'll help us find the most direct, unobscured, un 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 unobstructed route to get to where we want to go. And so what we really do as financial planners is help people put together kind of a financial GPS. We put in there from where you're at today, what is it going to take to get you to where you want to go and, on and each one of those sense, goals. Tim, of those goals. Again, we talked a couple of weeks ago on the program with our uh, viewers about how it's not just retirement money, but it's medical care, it's educational needs. It's benefactor situations where they may want to give through a charitable trust or sure. other things. Are those the types of things you're covering with people so you're getting into the holistic nature of the person? Well, Steve, you, you used the phrase on a previous uh, program, comprehensive financial planning. And so there's base level of planning. Now, in other words, how much do I need to be putting away monthly to be able to put Johnny and Sally and Susie through college? How much do I need to be putting away monthly to retire at X age, factoring in this level of inflation and X percent rate of return. But Steve, as you're alluding to, it goes way beyond that because there's health care decisions, there's decisions when do we take Social Security? Do we take it as early as 62 or do I take it out at 66 or 67 or 65 or 70? And, and how do I take care of health care if I end up uh, retiring early? You know, that's a big decision today. People will retire, they'll plan to retire maybe at age 60, but Medicare doesn't step in till 65 or 66, you could fall into and they've a got that big gap there for health care. So you have not only health care costs for themselves, but health care costs for parents as parents are, are getting older and becoming dependent upon adult children. Um, special needs children that could be in the family. Uh, in other words, children that will be dependent upon mom and dad and possibly somebody else after mom and dad is gone for many years and beyond. There are so many circumstances that require very complex, very in-depth, uh, kind of comprehensive financial planning. Let me, let me ask you this. And to the master of money folks, this is filmed live. We're not scripted here. So I'm going to hit Tim with something he may not be ready for. If I'm watching this program right now and I'm thinking I'm 45 years old, I'm now developing serious concerns about the future that I hold, because that's kind of when we all start to really focus in on it. There's two questions that if I'm sitting there, I'm asking, first of all, is it possible for an advisor to advise me without a plan? Not really. Um, I mean, not that it can't be done. Uh, and it's done all the time in different fields. I, I use a phrase that prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't find a doctor that you can call up and explain what your problems are over the phone, what your symptoms are, <laughs> and they might not call, they could call a prescription in the Walgreens for you. Um, now, I'm not saying every time that happens it's lethal, but it can be. Right. Um, you know, we've we've all heard the horror stories. If, if time allowed us, I could give you hours and hours and hours of horror stories of malpractice in our business. Well, I've, everybody's and, seen that. We've watched the Department of Labor change regulations to create fiduciary standard. We've watched the entire governmental process criticize financial services as an industry. So you, you say to this person, I need you to do this plan. And so they do. But give me a. A contrary indicator here. If I'm sitting out there and I'm looking at you and I'm saying, well, is there any circumstance that I wouldn't go to a financial plan as opposed to a broker, an insurance agent, a bank? I'm not being critical of that, but I'm, again, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, 
why wouldn't I go to a financial planner first before I went to anyone else? Well, it, it makes sense. You should, just like you wouldn't just go to the pharmacy to get a prescription without going to see your doctor first to get a diagnosis, okay? Um, it's, it's really the same concept with financial planning. Now, unfortunately, in our industry, in our business, and there's a lot of discussion in Washington and, and in various different places around the country about what is a fiduciary. And, and there's this debate, and we, you know, I've, you, you've, you've sounded in on this debate as yeah, well, and there's a lot of... several articles you on have, the whole you, concept you of fiduciary and, and so the, the challenge is, is the person that is under the guise of being a financial planner really just selling us a product? Okay, is, is somebody putting together what's appearing to be a financial plan when really the whole game plan is to sell that person yeah, I, a product? That, now, I'm well, not suggesting... Let, let me interject something there, though, because it raises a question, a flag that I know they're thinking. Is there something I can use to determine when that's being done as opposed to when I have a legitimate planner in front of me? That's a great question, Stephen. I wish there was a real simple answer but let me just say that a, a good starting point is the business card or the label on the door uh, or the person's website if it's a if you're working with somebody that they basically work for an insurance company they work for a wirehouse or brokerage firm that sells and manufactures product even if that person has their intentions in the right place in other words they have no intention to harm that person. They really do want to put that person's interest at, 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 uh, up front. There often can be a conflict of interest. And so first and foremost, we need to look at does the person that is providing the financial planning services, do they also sell product? Do, me, do they me, work for a company that yeah. sells and manufactures product? Let me product? jump in on that because one of the things that the Masters of Money have seen is this discussion of fiduciary responsibility. In the 401k space now, the Department of Labor is saying that a broker who represents Merrill Lynch will no longer be allowed to sell just Merrill Lynch products. And that would be a breach of that fiduciary standard, which is not yet, yet in place. You're suggesting that a true financial planner is not bound to one set of products. Right. So they're open to that. Yes. Is I mean, an analogy would be, let's say if I went to my doctor and he prescribed a medication that he also owned the pharmaceutical company that manufactured that medication that was being prescribed. There's, a, there's a potential for a real conflict of interest. And so I think that as you're looking for a planner. If you want to truly find somebody that functions under the fiduciary model, and not the that, suitability model. Is there model. a license a or something that can help me know that? Well, anybody that has a CFP or a, they're a registered fiduciary, but it, truly, you really just need to ask them, do you sell product or are you truly functioning as a fiduciary? In other words, do you always have my best interest at heart? And so they come in and they talk to a financial planner, a legitimate comprehensive planner. Are they going to be charged for that? They probably should be. And you know, what is an average ballpark fee they should be looking at? Well, you know, we kind of put it into a, kind of a silver, gold, platinum level type plan just to be able to put uh, a, a title on it, if you will. Um, and, and planning can start at the couple hundred dollar range and go all the way up to thousands. But the average couple uh, with, uh, you know, a few children that they're trying to plan for college, trying to plan for uh, retirement planning and with some of the normal complexities that are going to be in that household's financial plan, they need to expect that they're probably going to spend somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 uh, on up to, you know, uh, Five, six, seven hundred dollars up into the thousands. How much wealth I have, how depending complex upon it the is complexities and, yeah. and what level of, of time is involved. It's similar in some ways to everybody goes out every year and they have a tax return done. All right. Now I can do my tax return on my own. I can go online or I can go to the store and buy software uh, and prepare uh, my own tax return. 
Um, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. If I have a, a 1040 EZ, I could probably get away with, with doing my own tax return. But at some level, I need to bring in uh, a professional that can, that's going to be trained uh, to handle some of the complexities of planning that are going to go beyond what that basic software and the can the downside do. would be if I don't commit to a plan, I'm going to miss something that in the long run could cost me a lot more than the $300. Thousands. So let me kind of continue. I, we've got a lot we could talk about where we're bound by some time. It, it, we've talked about robo-advisors, and I was talking in the um, first part of the program about there are really two things they miss. First is risk control because they're all based on efficient market hypothesis. But secondly, they can't know you. There is an extension of that on the web on automated financial planning systems. EFIN, there's some, in fact, I listed one of them, financiallogic.com and EFIN plan. Are these good in the appropriate circumstance of an entry level thing that maybe you want to dip your toe with that? Or are they more dangerous? then they are good. And that's, a, that's an opinion well, it, I know. It, but. it can be dangerous. Um, just like there are, you know, I, I gave the example of a medical doctor. I can go online and search and Google uh, my, my symptoms and come up with what might be some possible things that are going wrong in me physically. Um, it, the first level of planning, really there's three different stages of planning. First is to figure out where am I today? kind of like your starting point on the GPS. The second level of planning is trying to figure out where am I trying to go Which to and me is what the is hard it going to take. I think most people don't know what they want. Yeah, it's yeah. Helping them get there and, is And trying thing. to figure out where, what's it going to take to get to where I want to go. And then the, the most complex level of planning where it really takes some true expertise and objectivity is what is it going to take to get me there. And that's where the real objective advice comes into play. Uh, and where people can really get hurt, just um, t taking the advice of kind of a, a, a robo-advisor online, if you will, who really knows nothing about your personal set of circumstances, and it's based on, this advice is often based upon very flawed academic theory that we've talked right, about. Right, right. And so the risks are huge. Um, you know, we've just been through... Uh, a seven, eight year bull run in the market. Well, over the last 15 years, we've seen not once but twice where markets have had better than a 50% correction. Well, we were talking in the first part of the program just last week, we had an enormous sell off because of the fear of interest rates going up, which exactly. statistically must happen at some point. Yes. So folks, I'm going to wrap this up for tonight, but I want to thank Tim for bringing you the insights he does. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, and while no editorial content is changed by this, I do have a relationship with my friends at Harvest where I serve as director of financial education. I only bring that up so that you know about it. Again, they exercise no editorial control over the Master of Money program. This is sponsored and produced exclusively by the Society to Advance Financial Education, which is an unrelated not-for-profit organization. We also want to tonight thank all of our sponsors, Harvest for sponsoring us and Superstock Investor, as well as the musicians who helped make this a little more interesting for us. But most of all, I want to thank you for devoting this half hour each and every week to building a better path to prosperity for you and your family. Join us next week and set your calendars to be with us. We'll have another great program for you. But until then, have a wonderful, prosperous week, and thank you for viewing tonight's Master of Money.